the other way. We some other changes, specifically one of the other changes, which is referenced in front of you, is recognizing some um, inequities. If you're an existing operator, and um, currently around the country, let's say you're a long-established business, and you have 18 machines on site, if you relocate to a new venue, then in fact you're going to be capped at nine. You lose nine machines. This is saying it's actually unfair. They should be able to maintain the current number. So that's another change in this reference. To clarify that, I think that's it's on that second page when you talk about relocating the venues at the bottom. To hold the right for more can do that. That clause of that became part of the act and it appears it will. That would therefore completely nullify and remove clause nine out of our yes. yeah. So I think we need to hold that there, but I think before we get to that we have a couple of other things we need to do. Thank yeah. you. But that's it. Mrs. Robinson, we wanted to Sinking the policy, and we're happy with that. 
um, and so that in so regard that to both the community people coming in to support and the venues that we do have supporting the sinking lid policy, I believe that we have a firm community support for our sinking lid policy. Thank you for that. So carrying on, um, I thought that was the overarching. I think there are perhaps some other uh, questions that we might need to ask. Are there areas of our current policy that we think may need to be tweaked or improved upon? Um, do councillors want to separate the TAB board venue policy from the um, class board venue game policy? Um, do you want do councillors want to pick up on Mr. True's submission to cap the TAB at one? Um, rather than um, then the sinking lid policy at the moment, or he changed it from two from his submission. Do councillors want to just um, discuss the, the relocation and merging um, of the club venues? And that's just what we've been talking about, other than the natural disaster and the outcome of that, which in our current sinking lid policy um, suggests that they will reduce the numbers. So um, hearing from the, the bill that's just come through, or the, um, or the proposed bill, um, that would certainly impact, and as this worship said, it would delete clause nine of our, of our policy. So these are questions that um, we do need to um, consider, at least. So I'm opening it up to you. Thank you, Your Worship. You've already you've started the ball rolling. Um, I think that was all that I... Had started with anyway, but I will go. Councillor Van Royen, you wanted to start? Um, well, the answer to nearly all those questions was yes, I would like to look at all the aspects. Yes. Uh, and answer to some questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and having said that, I absolutely support the second lead policy. Thank this, you. This Thank you. Case. That's what our overarching. That was a, is that the general feeling, Councillor? Yeah, yeah I, I think it is. It's from the submission. The submitters, you know, I think they're happy with the policy. It just needs tweaking. I, I, I agree with the, um, you know, like I said, to do with the relocation. And I think that's one of the one of the major points that needs to be um, looked at and what we can what we can just have a discussion over that. Um, so yeah. I'm, with what the you know, you brought up, we just need to tweak this um, document and there. Yeah. And goes in the Any other yeah. comments, questions? Council well, uh, yeah, I would just like to say that I strongly support the sinking of policy, but some of the areas that you've mentioned definitely need to be looked at. Good, thank you. Right, now, how are we going to work this through? Oh, sorry, the mission. Oh, we need to be there for the yeah. video. No, I agree. You have outlaid those beautifully. But I therefore move that this, that this, that this hearing therefore confirms uh, that we will maintain the sinking of the policy uh, as detailed in our policy. And then we can discuss, I think, all the other areas you brought up are very, very valid and will need some areas, but they fall within our sinking of the policy. So I will move the council affirms, uh, our comms confirms that we will maintain our sinking of the policy. And we'll second that. And Brian, all those in favour then? Or does that please say aye? Aye. Against? So that's carried. So fundamentally that's the basis that we're going to work on from here. Thank you. We're going to start then. Um, just going through the submissions. Yeah. Um, can I just change the water a little bit? Yes. Um, first and foremost, I think uh, it's probably an easy uh, fix as such. Um, Mr. True, on behalf of the TIB, said that he would like a separate policy. Um, he is correct. Uh, our drafting, and it's entirely my uh, fault, it did not explicitly reference in the objectives the um, Racing Act, so it is uh, prior to the 20 that we are I don't see a problem if uh, we redraft an exclusive TAB policy. Uh, we can retain the sort of the sentiment in the uh, in our policy. Uh, Council has historically indicated that if there's another TAB, then there won't be class four machines. That sentiment carried through. There will be a debate whether, in fact, uh, 
council would like it to be able to relocate without any uh, consequences, but we'll have that discussion. But just separating the TAB policy, I think, is a goer. If the council's in agreement, it's a, a relatively simple thing. I think the costs associated with having a, a separate hearing or submissions are probably negligible. Thank you for that. Councillor Blair. I would suggest that uh, an easier way of doing it and be guaranteed that the costs are negligible is that we would reference the rate cap in this document rather than have a separate policy. That's what I'd do. Thank you. Councillor Gutt. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, the other thing would be um, when they're referenced or separate, it out that I just wanted to confirm the, um, with the, with the TABs um, that would that stand that there'd still be no alcohol? So if they got you know, the venues, just, just confirming that for the, the, the difference between the um, TABs and the, the satellite sites. And their outlets. And their outlets or whatever you call them. Um, the difference, just the difference between them making sure they were clear. Just recap. A TAB venue is owned or operated by the New Zealand racing industry. Yes. The automatic machines that you have in pubs are not deemed to be board venues. There is no current legislation governing them. The TAB and the Racing Act is not permitted to have alcohol. So unless there is a challenge to the Racing Act, that would remain. So, what Councillor Yes, I, I just wanted to ask Mr. Anderson. Um, Councillor Blair has suggested referencing, <coughs> referencing TAB within the, within the um, policy, but within one policy. Would a separate policy provide more clarity, perhaps? And uh, keep the two things apart? A little bit more clearly. Um, legally speaking, um, Councillor Blair is exactly right. It's an omission of a couple of words, um, and our policy is completely lawful. Um, if Council was of the view that they wanted more clarity around specifically TAB, then you could twink it explicitly for the commissions relating to TABs. Um, but again, I am of the view that our current policy controls TABs and has done so. But we could say the relocation policy. Yes, answer. Just make a comment to Mr. Trace's mission. The advantages of a separate TAB policy rather than just referencing is a separate policy ensures each policy is technically and legally correct, and this is just a submission. Um, it ensures that a major channel of the New Zealand Racing Board's operation is given a fair hearing. And as he did state, most of most of the submissions are about the gaming machines and the um, actual board fair, the TAB venues just sort of get wiped aside. Um, and it's all the negativity about gaming machines. And he said a separate policy ensures that only relevant considerations are taken into account. And that I think is that it gets muddled up with the machines. So that was his reasoning that we perhaps need to um, think about. So that's answering your question. Um, Councillor Blair, sorry. Yeah. And then you. So just to go further on what I said about being in the same policy. So the policy objectives here say to support the purpose and intent of the Gambling Act 2003, and I would add the Moose and Racing Act, whatever, whatever year it is. So if we think about the logistics and, and costs and all the rest of the council, so what the process that's happened with this policy is there was a workshop, my recollection was in March, and I was away and never attended that, and then we sit here and we have a hearing and so a whole lot of people come to it, and when you think about it, if we charge everybody out here at 25 bucks an ounce, then it's, it's, it's a lot of money. And we would be going through the same process except for the time, the length of the time of the hearing. So we'd have to, well, and also the workshop. So we'd have to workshop a separate policy, and then we would have to go through the same same council meeting, same council meeting. So in mind, and even thing about further is that if we were efficient, what we would do is we'd have to get next time we have a review the gambling policy and we have a separate TAB policy, we would review both those on the same on the same day.